Greetings all. With the 10th edition Launchbox Leviathan coming out late last month as of recording, I have shoved quite a few products to the side for now in my excitement to get these new models built and ready to play. So today I'm going to be customising the captain somewhat. After some deliberation I have decided to make a loyalist chapter based on the theme of the Lunar Wolves. For in-law reasons, perhaps Call didn't listen to Gilliman and just went ahead with making all 18 legions anyway. Or I could pass them off as a Space Wolf successor chapter. Either way, let's get started. To begin with, I remove all the parts to make the bulk of the body and I clean them up. The first adjustment I'm going to be making is to remove the peg that is supposed to hold the captain's head in place, as this would get in the way of any adjustments I make there later on. This was a pain, as the space it is in is rather small, but Clippers did a decent enough job, and I found that using a knife and file to take off small bits at a time of the remainder worked, though it was a tedious task. Thankfully, it won't be seen too much once her head is in there. Once happy with the peg removal, some plastic glue was added, and the body halves were brought together. The next step would involve the back part of the body, and the first thing I will be doing is removing this little iron halo decoration from the top with my cutters. The second thing I will be doing to this part is removing that nice cloak he has, taking care not to remove too much of the belt, as I will have to rebuild some of his armour plates with putty afterwards. Now the cloak goes up and under his arms as well, so it was important to go around the sides and make it look more like armour plates, and less like some idiot had cut a cloak off. And I spent some time with my knife and files to essentially rebuild the back of the armour. And after that was done, the part was glued onto the body. With the removal of the cape, the back of this guy's waist area is a rather large hole, so I have mixed up some milliput in order to fill it in. The process was time consuming though fairly simple, taking small pieces of the putty at first to fill in the large hole, and then taking yet more to shape the missing arm plates. Luckily I had another terminator from the set to compare to, so using my damp modelling tools to ensure that the putty doesn't stick to them too much, I could shape it to the best approximation of what the armour should look like without the cloak. Now, it would have been an option to sacrifice one of the terminators from the box to get the armour plates from, however I did feel that was a bit of a waste, and once the model is finished, it really shouldn't look too bad. Now this milliput here takes some time to set, so I left this overnight, and true to form, when I came back to it to start recording again, I had knocked the camera and it was pointing at absolutely nothing of import. But as you can see here, I have added in some pouches to this back area. They are from the Van Saar gang and are slightly curved, so I had to squish them down a little before gluing them in place on the back. Now this next step is also kind of optional, as I had originally intended to entirely change out his arms, so I took my cutters and removed the pegs that would attach the kit arms to the body. If I were to do this again, however, I would skip this step as I ended up using those arm parts anyways. So with that done and no adjustments happening to the legs, I added the front of his leg plates and feet to the model. Now weapon wise, I had an idea in mind for this guy having a thunder hammer. So I'm going to use this one here from the Space Wolves Wolfguard Terminator kit. There are several in the kit, but this one has a nice wolf head on it. It does, however, have a slightly different wrist setup to the new Captain model. If I were to just attach this straight on, the power pipes from it would have nowhere to go. So I'm going to remove the wrist from the Captain, and instead use the wrist from this arm, again from the Wolf Guard box. Taking some time to compare where the cuts would have to go on both arms, I would then use my saw to make the cuts and give them a clean with my knife for attaching the new wrist to the arm with some plastic glue. Before I do use this hammer, I am going to be using some milliput once again to fill in the runes on its head, as these didn't give off the aesthetic I was really going for. But this was a simple process of taking a tiny bit, squishing it into the area, then rubbing off the excess with my finger. The final result does show up a slight ghost of the runes after paint, but it's really not too noticeable from a distance, so I'll take it. 
After a fight with the final dregs of the glue bottle, it is time to add the hammer to the arm. The protruding wolf head on the bracer and the pipework make its position a rather a simple choice, but there is a tiny bit of wiggle room, so I could get the angle I was going for, and once that was done, I could add the shoulder pad from the original captain kit. Now the next step is where I realised that I could have left the pegs for the arms intact, as by using the original shoulder pad, I could only really put the arm in the same position, which isn't a problem, as it's a decent enough looking angle for the hammer to be held at. But in my haste to lop off the push fit bits, I made a mistake. Oh well, you live and learn. For his left arm, I'm going to replace the Storm Bolter with this Power Fist from the Terminator kit. I had already removed it from its arm to give one of the Terminators a chain fist, so I just needed to use my saw to lop off the Storm Bolter hand near the elbow joint, a piece which will find a nice home in my bits box for a little while. Attaching this fist was actually relatively easy, as it was from the same model of Terminators, so plastic glue and wiggling did the job nicely and I could add the back of the power fist to it as well at this point. However, before I put this arm in place, I needed to work on his cloak. The cloak I'm using is this one from the Wolfguard Terminators again, with its animal pelt, and because of this, the arm will need some adjustments to fit under it properly, so I will need to attach this glorious cloak first. And to begin with, I would need to make a few adjustments to the mounting points of the cloak, because it is designed for use on the slightly smaller older Terminator models, I would need to shave off some of the back mounting point thing here with my knife so it could sit a bit further forwards. I would also use this time to remove the little vent things on top of the Terminator as the cloak has cutouts for the older style placement of these, but they do not perfectly match with the newer style, so they would have to go. With those cuts done and the application of probably too much glue, I could bring the cloak onto the body and hold it in place for a few moments till a good bond was formed. I had considered building the cloak as a whole and then fitting it, but honestly, doing it one piece at a time would made way more sense. The top piece of the cloak would be next. Where it sat over the right shoulder would need a slight trim to it as the shoulder rises slightly over the back. So this was done with my knife and file carefully to make sure that it still looked sensible from the outside and with that adjustment made, it can be glued into place, which helped greatly to hold the back of the cloak on, as it had already fallen off and been reattached by this point. Before adding the front dangly leg piece of the cloak, I would need to add the shoulder, as it would affect the cloak somewhat, and it is easier to do the shoulder now, when I can see what I am doing. To begin with, I would need to cut off the crest thing on the shoulder, as it would get in the way of positioning, now, I could have taken one from the regular Terminators, but I didn't have a spare one left. So, taking my clippers and forgetting where the camera was pointing, I snipped off the entire crest, and cleaned up the arrow with my knife before attaching the pad to the arm. Now, whilst this power fist looks great, I wanted to turn it into a claw. To do this, I'm going to be using the fingers from this Heresy Era Cataphracti Terminator Power Claw. Now this one in particular has a similar hand pose to the power fist, so it was a simple task of taking my cutters to the clawed fingers and removing them as a whole piece. Then doing similar to the fingers on the power fist above the first join, cleaning both areas up. And after another fight with the glue bottle, the fingers and thumb claws can be added to the power fist, turning it into a rather striking claw hand. After leaving that, kind of fragile fingered hand for quite a while to get to a point in which I could pick it up without fear of it disintegrating, I could glue the arm to the body and start thinking about adding the front of that cloak. To get this to fit, I would need to make a few adjustments to the thickness of the join area as it was meant to go on a smaller body. I need to make some space for that chunky new armor. It was during a test fit here that I realised the piece was designed to be slightly bent around the front of the Wolfguard body. So using some brute force, I straightened it up a little, taking care not to go too crazy, as I didn't want to snap this in half. After a little bit of cutting and shaping, I could fit that final piece of cloak. Now granted it isn't the greatest of fit, 
and there is the tiny little gap here, but it is an organic furry material, so it probably won't notice. And if it's too obvious, then mottled putty exists for a reason. So, time for a head. And the head I've chosen to use is this one here from the Age of Darkness Legion Praetor. Well, one of them. Though before adding it in, I'm going to have to do some trimming, as the Terminator Captain's head is minuscule in comparison. Taking cutters, I snipped off the neck of the Praetor. However, in my haste to finish him, I had taken off too much and didn't like the angle of it. So, taking a little ball of milliput, I could remake the neck area to the angle that I wanted. And being in a cowl thing, it would not be too noticeable at all. And with that added, he is ready for a coat of paint. And here I can bask in the glory of my nice new Terminator Captain. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, as it helps the channel out a great deal. Any comments or suggestions are appreciated too, and constructive criticism helps me grow and understand my craft a bit better. A massive thanks to all my current subscribers, and I will see you in the next one. Well, I guess you will see me. If I could see you, that would be kind of weird, wouldn't it? Anyways, stay safe and have a good one all.